So for decades now, we have amassed staggering amounts of nuclear waste. Yet within this seeming burden lies an incredible opportunity. So let's reframe our understanding about nuclear waste. And today I'm going to focus on uranium, mainly the uranium that is left after we have enriched uranium to make fuel. And this thing is what we call depleted uranium. So nuclear waste isn't a dead end from that perspective because so much energy is still contained within this so-called waste. It's actually a gold mine waiting to be tapped. So the irony is that we have known how to turn this waste into a powerhouse for decades. It's called the breeder reactor. Now influential figures such as Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, they recognize the potential that breeder reactors have. And that's why they are trying to commercialize one of these designs, which is what we are going to talk about today. So when we consider the past, we see that nations like the US, UK, Japan, France, Germany, India, China, and Russia have been pioneering innovation and development of breeder reactor technology. And they've basically laid out a solid foundation because we now understand what breeder reactors are, how they function, and how we should operate them. So let's dive into the inner workings of these breeder reactors and see what we can learn. So unlike traditional light and heavy water reactors, breeder reactors have a conversion ratio that is larger than one. This means that these reactors create more fuel than they actually consume. And this is the key to reusing all this depleted uranium that we have stockpiled for all these years and which is now being considered to be waste. Now, normally when we consider a light water reactor, for instance, what you have is quite homogeneous fuel. So it's all four to 5% enriched fuel, which gets loaded into the reactor. Sometimes you need to shuffle this fuel around because during the duration of the time some of this fuel gets utilized more than other fuel so you need to make sure that you keep it organized in such a way that it gets used optimally. Now in a breeder reactor it's slightly different because you have this core in which you have all the fissile material and then outside the core you have a blanket which is also fuel elements but these fuel elements are basically loaded with uranium-238. So what happens is this uranium-238 it gobbles up all the neutrons that are basically flying out of the central part of this reactor core and these uranium-238 isotopes then turn into plutonium-239. So the beauty about plutonium-239 is that it will fission when it gets hit by a neutron. Now it's important that the neutron needs to have sufficient energy, it needs to be fast enough, because if a thermal neutron hits a plutonium atom, then it can happen that this plutonium atom then basically eats this neutron up and says, okay, nice, now I'm going to turn into plutonium-230. So when you have this fast spectrum, the chances are bigger that the plutonium-239 will fission. It's, it's like 98% of the time time that it will fission and this is important because you don't want to lose any neutrons in this process due to neutron capture that doesn't precipitate another fission because you need the fissions to keep going you need the neutrons to keep breeding and if you uh, lose neutrons somewhere this means that your reactor is breeding suboptimally and that's not what you need now knowing how this works and knowing that we have the experience to do this is important now the real game changer lies in our stockpile of depleted uranium hexafluoride. Now, when we consider the stockpile of this depleted uranium hexafluoride, we see that there's about 2 million tons of it in the world. And when we say, for instance, that we want to produce 50,000 terawatt hours each year of electrical power. And if we say that we want to produce 50,000 terawatt hours of thermal energy per year, and we now know that there's 1.3 million tons of uranium in there, then we can power this fleet of nuclear reactors for 180 years. Now, when we take all the uranium that we still can extract, then we get up to 811 years and when we consider all the uranium that we could potentially extract using seawater extraction then it's more than 260,000 years. So since we now know how much potential there is just in uranium alone, I'm not even talking about thorium at the moment, we see why people like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates are trying to invest into this technology. So the construction of this first nuclear power plant, which they are going to build in Wyoming, is expected to begin next year. And this is being reported by the Freethink website. 
It also reports that power production should occur first in 2030. But that's not all, because there's more companies that are trying to commercialize nuclear reactors that are going to breed new fuel from what we now consider to be nuclear waste. Uh, for instance, Oklo, they have done a course adjustment. At first, they were trying to do something with a heat pipe, a very small reactor. And right now, what they're doing is they're basically starting to design a new reactor based on the EBR2 which was also a liquid metal fast breeder reactor and Oklo is planning to deploy their first units at an air force base in Alaska so in essence when we look at breeder reactors and let's be perfectly clear here because I do like light water reactors I do like heavy water reactors and I think that we should be building loads and loads and loads of them at this very moment and well up into the 2040s breeder reactors are a nice addition to this fleet because it can deliver both heat electricity it eliminates part of the nuclear waste but it doesn't eliminate all nuclear waste entirely because that's basically the note that we need to add whenever we are talking about nuclear waste because depleted uranium is not waste it is a resource however most fission products that come out of nuclear reactors are waste and we need to find a way to store this stuff responsibly now the momentum for new nuclear capacity is clearly building up we see it everywhere we see it at cop 28 but we also see it in the announcement of new projects all over the world so in summary the potential within nuclear waste is immense and it's and it's great to see that the wheels of progress are finally trying to turn this potential into a commercial reality now and with that you have reached the end of this video uh, which is awesome thank you for still being here uh, if you want to support me please uh, check out the description to see how you can do so and now here's my uh, new goodbye may the strong force be with you bye bye